Welcome to the Wilderness Journal. With your host, Kyle Randall. Eagle Valley Outfitters. Whether it's archery or firearms, big lakes or small streams, whether it's broadheads or bullets, boots or bait casters, you can get it at Eagle Valley Outfitters, US 23 North, Pinconi. And by Michigan Stinger Sport Fishing Products, makers of Michigan Stinger trolling spoons, dive bomb planing weights, Stinger E-chip flashers and trolling flies, custom rod holders and rigger weights. That's Michigan Stinger Sport Fishing Products. And by the Corn Crib of Farwell, Michigan. The Corn Crib now features universal grain burners and Great Lakes stoves, furnaces, and portable heaters. Indoor, outdoor, freestanding or insert. Add it on or build it in new. That's the Corn Crib, where they're heating it up with corn. And by Plowman's Carts, makers of the Hunting Buddy Custom Cart. Plowman's has sales, service, parts, and rentals. That's Plowman's Carts, where we turn work into play. And by viewers like you. Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to the Wilderness Journal. I'm your host, as always, Kyle Randall, and I certainly want to thank you for joining me again this week. Hey, and speaking of this week, we're headed up north. We're headed to Ontario, Canada for some awesome fishing. But this program, I want you to bear in mind, isn't just about fishing. It's also about a chance to spend some great time with some of our great friends. You see, joining Miss T and I on this couple's trip are Kyle and Becky and Ryan and Val and Tim and Paula and collectively, well the whole bunch of us are headed up to fish with our good friends and hosts, Eric and Sue Lund up at Esnagami Lodge. Now we're gonna do all kind of different things on this trip and I will say that everybody was kind of, you know, feeling the anticipation. There was a lot of excitement there at the float plane base waiting for our chance to fly in. <laughs> but I also think there was more than a few of us that didn't quite grasp the whole concept of making television. <laughs> Is that on? No, the red light's not on, so it's not on. Okay, right? <laughs> red light's not on. Did you know that I can select whether or not that red light should blink? <laughs> no, I think you're lying. <laughs> Do you? Good luck with that, dear. <laughs> and go we did. And not an hour after getting to the lodge, yeah, Eric had us strung out in boats headed across Eric the lake. Lund catching fish at Esnagami. How'd that work out? Uh, so far, not too bad. <laughs> In a couple of minutes after stopping at the first spot, well, Eric was giving everybody a brief lesson on, you know, the proper way to jig for walleye here. Walleye from here, of course. Yeah. We'll take that one. That's like the one on the brochure. Yes, that is. Is that the same one? Or? It is the same. Same, one. the very same fish. Well made. So what, Tina? He's got now going to catch your fish. Catch my fish. But not your fish? No. No. That's his fish. That's his fish? Mine sure. would be much yeah. bigger. The Randall release. <laughs> I see you've, you've learned well, Weed Hopper. <laughs> <laughs> well, after that, yeah, everybody sort of spread out. And before long, yeah, those lessons started paying off. What do you got there, Timmy? <laughs> Bring him on board. Got you got him, babe. Nice net job, Paula. <laughs> it's going to be 23 and a half. Yeah, the lessons were working. Although I do think we needed to go over the netting part again. <laughs> what are you doing? Fishing. What do you mean fishing? Whoa. What's this? Look at that bait, well, look at what, what do you got on there for bait? What is that? <laughs> oh my goodness. I got it. That is so ugly. And speaking of lessons, <laughs> yeah, I think this one pretty much proves the fish it has Nagami. <laughs> yeah, they'll bite anything. Men everywhere throwing up in their living room. <laughs> Look at that's disgusting. That's ah, gross. 
Now Eric's got to catch another fish. I bet he's got a pink lure too. Pink, pink. Think pink, that's what's working? Put it back. Well, fortunately for, you know, men everywhere, Eric's fish came on a slightly more normal color. Yeah, something like chartreuse. <laughs> Looks good from here. It does look good from there. Ah, bait. Nice. Well, pretty much everybody caught at least a few fish that night. And just after a great breakfast the next morning, yeah, we had them back out there doing it again. Paula and Tim were catching walleye, and as we looked around, we could see that Becky had something on it. <laughs> From the bend in her rod, I was guessing, yeah, that probably wasn't a walleye. I do believe Becky was tangled up with her very first, honest to goodness, big old northern pike. Nicely done. Good fish. And it wasn't five minutes after hers and... Kyle Wang, you think you got some? I think something got you. And Kyle Wang had a hold of his first. Yeah, I'm pretty sure of it. What are you going to do with that? Put your hand down there and tickle it. Hope that Mark can grab a hold of it. Yeah, Mark's going to get a face hole. <laughs> Like you smiling and stuff. <laughs> it's not as big as yours, though, is it, Becky? Yeah. No. 31. <laughs> How'd I know that? <laughs> All right, set him back in the water nice and gentle. Just hold on to his tail there. Hold on to his tail and rock him back and forth until he does that. <laughs> well done, sir. Thank you. That's all right, Texas. We're doing well. Good deal. And it wasn't just Kyle and Becky, everybody was doing real well. In fact, we were watching Tim land another great fish when I heard Valerie start squealing and laughing. I think I might truly have a walleye this time and not a branch, but we'll see. <laughs> nice. Is that a lunch one? I think it might be. Oh, I think you got lunch. We will eat today. Yeah. Well, it was good to know that at least the Hopkins were thinking about shore lunch. <laughs> yeah, trust me, that's important. <laughs> nice fish. Nice. And just after Ryan hung another set of fillets, <laughs> yeah, on the stringer, well, that's when it started. <laughs> what do I mean started? Folks, Watch and count with me. This actually happened non-stop. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Tina catch a fish, and then <laughs> Captain back there says, oh, well, I can catch a better fish. Right, Tina, I think yours is much bigger. Yes. <laughs> that, that, that is much bigger. <laughs> so big, I can't hold on to it. Well, that's understandable, the fish that size. Yeah. It's a little windy, but the fish are still biting. Well, now, friends, that's the first two. Wow. <laughs> you guys are good. Oh. I hope the folks at home didn't get too seasick watching this, but... Well, now you're sitting there thinking, well, a double, that's not unusual, Kyle. We've seen them all the time. <laughs> yeah, I understand that. Just just wait a yes. minute. I don't know. I mean, you don't know. Oh, I got an idea what it is. It looks like a big old wall. Well, now that's oh. three. <laughs> wall with an attitudinal issue. Oh! What was that? <laughs> sort of. Looks like he hit you in the eye. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, she didn't get hit in the eye. She's allergic to some bug bites, and that's just the reaction. And yeah, and that fish Eric's got, that's four. Say it with a smile. I am saying it. You are. <laughs> well, find another. Right about there. Find some more bait here. Here we are. <laughs> and perhaps you've noticed. Yeah, now he's calling his shots. Just one <laughs> after another. 
shoulder getting a little sore? Shoulders, I still got a little shoulder left. Do no you? problem, yeah. That's good. There you go. There. Well, now, for those of you playing along at home, yeah, that's five. One more time. One more time. Is that three in a row? You know what they say, once is an accident, twice is coincidence, three times is pretty much a fact. Yes. <laughs> that's the same one. Oh, what happened? He's catching him back there. What's the deal? He's messing with me out there. Come on. We're about to yep. hit the shore, but Tina's not done yet, folks. We're gonna hit the shore. But Tina's got a big one. We're gonna hit the shore. But Tina's got a big one. There it is. Help me. <laughs> yeah, that's number six. Oh yeah, and take a this, look behind her. Easy. We'll look at yours for a minute. Look at Eric's for a minute. I'll land it for you. <laughs> yeah, that's six and seven, and we haven't even moved yet. You didn't tell me you had four arms. <laughs> Whatever it takes. Yeah. Yeah, those are a couple of them. When the dandy fish are coming fish. this fast, you just, everybody got to do their part. A couple of dandy fish. They going back? Yeah, it's not bad. Yours isn't bad. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> Look exactly like this one. There we go. <laughs> yeah, and before Tina could even get another minnow on her hook. Whoa. Yeah, that's <laughs> Yeah, I think that's eight. Yeah. That's a nice yellow right there. There you go, bud. It's windy, it's bumpy, but the fish be biting. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, I think that's nine. <laughs> There, the Randall release. You're getting better at that. Yeah, that. Hit him, honey. Look at that. She said, yeah, you ain't nothing. She said, you ain't nothing. I seen you Canadian, it ain't nothing. And one? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure that makes 10, at least in the old math. One right below. Yep. What do you mean, seven? Seven in a row? <laughs> now, friends, with that fish Eric's got, that's 11 total fish, and actually seven in a row for Eric on seven consecutive casts. <laughs> now, I don't know where you're from, but around here, <laughs> we call that good fishing. <laughs> well, finally, we had to start the motor and move out. There's some fish here. And just as I was checking on the other guys, <laughs> yeah. Again? Yeah, it's the same fish. Actually, that's a good one. I was there. gonna say, that's a pretty good sized fish. But that was not fish. hungry at all. Look at that jig down that throat. way to break your line. <laughs> like I said, that's, that's a good, good way, way to break, break your line. line. Yeah, don't yeah I don't even think we should let him count that one. <laughs> oh, well, excuse me, she's actually catching fish. I say, excuse me, Tina's actually catching fish. We ain't gonna talk about your problems. <laughs> now, friends, I do believe if we count Eric's, that makes 13, count them 13 fish in a row. <laughs> in less than a half an hour, and we weren't the only ones catching fish. You go, girl! You got a fish, too? Yes. Were you talking to me, go, girl? Yeah, that's okay, what I was yeah. saying. Thank you. <laughs> and obviously, some of our participants had been watching Eric just a little too closely. <laughs> but fortunately, Tina was keeping her eye on the prize. Now that's like 16 fish <laughs> without moving. We hadn't gone anywhere. All we've done is motored back out a little bit. And again, I'll remind you, we weren't the only ones catching. We got there, honey. In fact, I'm sure everybody caught numbers of fish before it finally slowed down 
And when it yeah. did, yeah, I think Eric came up with a reason. The reason some of the walleye left town. Yeah, you think maybe the reason is just come by and bet you? It might have. You appear to be having issues there. I am. I haven't seen this fish yet. Neither have I. Where's he going? Uh, he's heading to the road. That looks like a big pipe. That looks like a big pipe. There's only one or two small problems with it. Yeah. No leader. <laughs> Tina, come here, please. I want you to take over the camera. <laughs> Getting a little tingly on the... Uh... I see your, your drag is working. Friends, it seems that a 15 or 20 pound pike swimming through the middle of your fishing hole tends to suppress the walleye bite. <laughs> go figure. There we go, son. There oh, is yeah. a pie. That is a pie. On a jig. There, sir, is your fish. We got it. Show that to that girl behind you. She wants to see a big pike. How big was it? Uh, 37? Yep, right there, but it weighs. I mean, try and put your hand across the back of his neck, Ryan. Yeah. 20 pounds? Uh, nah, six, maybe 15, 15 16. 16. Yeah. It's pretty nice. That's good a job, big old good one. That's a good fish. On a jigging rod with six pound test, that's getting it done. Yeah. There she goes. To the bottom of the sea. Thank you very much. Right, well, well done. And you know what? I'm glad for a change you didn't use the Randall release on that one. Well, yeah, eh? <laughs> really appreciate that. <laughs> nice wow, fish. that was great. Well done on what a, a tough, fight. tough job. What a fight. All right, then. Okay. Now it's lunch time. Lunch time now. <laughs> <laughs> now it's lunch time. <laughs> well, friends, after fishing all together as a group for a couple days, Everybody decided, you know, they'd like to sort of go their own way for a day, do a little exploring, so we took the chance, that is Miss T and I, to join Eric and Sue Lund on a side trip into a place they call Wonderland. And I'm here to tell you, this place, yeah, it's got the right name. Well, after yesterday's fishing, motoring back into Wonderland with Sue and Eric, I didn't really know what to expect. But fortunately, in the very first place we stopped... Not bad, eh? Not bad. <laughs> There's guys in the States going, someone throw that woman in the lake. <laughs> Those flippy fish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you want to do the honors and let them go? Sure. <laughs> oh. Uh huh. All right then. That was great. Well, thanks for the lesson. We'll, we'll try to do that. All right. <laughs> That was good. It was like a pound and a half, That's maybe. That's gorgeous fish. Yes, it was. Congratulations. Thank nice you. work. Thanks for helping. Slimy. Yeah. Right. My friends, this place was truly amazing. There are these huge holes in the bottom of what amount to just ponds, really, and you motor in and out past each one, and everyone has, like I said, this hole at the bottom of it where water is welling up out of the bottom. Each one seems to be a little different color, and all of them <laughs> seem to have trout in them. A trout. <laughs> You a big old trout. You have one very dedicated big old trout. Okay. <laughs> that is a gorgeous trout. <laughs> Whoa! Lift your rod tip up, bring the fish's head to the net, and dip the net down in water. Go, 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 there you go. <laughs> Nicely done. Look at you. <laughs> Your red and white marabou was the right choice. That's beautiful. <laughs> you want a still picture of that? Sure. And friends, before we even got Tina's fish back in the water, what's all that commotion over there? We got it. We got it, or does it got you? And just like that, a couple of quick pictures, and Sue had her second great trout. I'm telling you, this place is amazing. People travel a long way for a fish like that. That was wow. fun. That was fun. Friends, mostly because this water is so clear and you can see so far down into it, I decided, in a moment of sure weakness, <laughs> to try a fly rod. You know the thought of watching a fish actually coming up and hitting a fly? Yeah, I thought that'd be kind of neat. 
And you know what? It was. <laughs> Fish coming up. Look at that trout. Not quite slowed down yet either. This is right near the edge of wow. Let me see if we can get them one time here for the folks at home. Oh, what do you think of that? That is what we come looking for, isn't it, Miss T? Yes, it is. We have to just getting started here on the Miss T trout portion of the show. There, we got that out. Do a quick, real quick measure. You know, that brook trout's only 18 inches long. I don't know why anybody would want one. <laughs> I had to show the camera the other side. Did you get that in the air? Cool. <laughs> Friends, this place was cool. And every time we move to another one of those little ponds, <laughs> yep. There's trees that are 30, 40 foot long just going that deep. And you just jig around the branches and they just fire out of there. See so what have we got here? Another 16, 18 inch brook trout? That all? What's the deal? You don't think that these were lake trout, they're so big. Uh, I mean, when folks say brook trout, they, they mean this, not you. Uh, you know, you grow up fishing the little farm creeks and you crawl through the cedars. You know what? We're going to dent this one here on your hands and knees. Yeah. Poke your pole through and flip an eight inch around. You didn't bring Ooh. enough net, dude. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you got fish all over. All over you got fish. <laughs> now that, friends, was an eight inch brook trout. <laughs> yeah, about Thank 10 you. inches ago. <laughs> It's nice to be catching fish like that in 2008. Yeah, that's the fish that the old timers talked about. When you know, remember back when I was a kid, before television, before cars. But here, well, that time's right now. Happy uh, 20th anniversary. Obviously, for 20 years, you've been doing something right. Uh, we're glad you guys could be here and join us you know, every Always year, but certainly uh, for a 20-year anniversary is is fantastic. You know, friends, fantastic, that's the perfect word. It's the perfect word to describe this place, to describe these fish, and most importantly, at least to us, to describe our wonderful host and hostess and good friend, the Lunds. In fact, the only thing that wasn't fantastic was, yeah, we were supposed to meet the rest of the group for shore lunch eh, about two hours ago. <laughs> Boy. Well, we'll try to get this mitt full in here. This will have trout. I say there is a trout. Okay, we'll put that one back. Look how clear this water is. This is remarkable. That'll work. Yeah, yeah we yeah. were leaving. <laughs> After one more cast. <laughs> well, friends, that was just a couple of days of the couples week up at Esnagami Lodge this year. We had such a great time, and I promise you're going to be seeing a lot more of that adventure in the shows to come. But for this program, yeah, we're just about out of time. And before we go, we certainly want to thank, you know, Kyle and Becky and Ryan and Valerie and Tim and Paula, my lovely bride, Miss T, certainly the babysitters, everybody that helped make that trip possible. Oh, and one more thing before I forget, send us your best fishing picture from this summer. And don't forget that stamp self-addressed envelope so we can get it back to you. You know, maybe it'll be you that gets featured next week right here on the family album portion of the program. And last, but certainly not least, we want to thank Eric and Sue Lund, everybody up at Esnagami Lodge, and congratulate you on your 20th anniversary in business. You know, you folks treat us so well every time we come there. <laughs> we always look forward to coming back. Hey, friends, we truly hope to see some of you up there, too. You know, wet in the line, maybe hooking a big one. And if we do, well, you can bet we'll stop and share a fish story or two. And if we don't, well, at the very least, we hope to see each and every one of you right back here for next week's Wilderness Journal. Well, happy anniversary again, Esnagami Lodge, and thanks again for putting yet another great memory into my Wilderness Journal. The Wilderness Journal is underwritten by... Eagle Valley Outfitters. Whether it's archery or firearms, big lakes or small streams, whether it's broadheads or bullets, boots or baitcasters, you can get it at Eagle Valley Outfitters. 
US 23 North, Pinconning. And by Michigan Stinger Sport Fishing Products, makers of Michigan Stinger Trolling Spoons, Dive Bomb Planing Weights, Stinger E-Chip Flashers and Trolling Flies, Custom Rod Holders and Rigger Weights. That's Michigan Stinger Sport Fishing Products. And by the Corn Crib of Farwell, Michigan. The Corn Crib now features universal grain burners and Great Lakes stoves, furnaces, and portable heaters. Indoor, outdoor, freestanding or insert. Add it on or build it in new. That's the Corn Crib, where they're heating it up with corn. And by Plowman's Carts. Makers of the Hunting Buddy Custom Cart. Plowman's has sales, service, parts, and rentals. That's Plowman's Carts, where we turn work into play. If you'd like more information about any of the folks we hunt and fish with or anything you've seen on this program, please pull us up online at www.wildernessjournal.com or you can write to us at Wilderness Journal, P.O. Box 320, Paris, Michigan, 49338. And remember, send us a copy of your favorite trophy picture and maybe you'll be the next one featured right here in the Wilderness Journal family album.